Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking at religious experiences and we shall ask, if the fact that religious experiences have been reported, does this in fact help prove the existence of God? Interesting. So throughout history and through all different religions, people have reported religious experiences. I want to first look at how exactly we define what a religious experience is and what makes it a religious experience as opposed to any other experience. Okay. Now the term religious experience seems quite broad. At first, one may just think it's any experience that involves a type of religion, so praying or going to church. Yes. But when debating religious experiences in philosophy, this isn't exactly what we mean. It is actually more profound than this. One of the best definitions comes from the philosopher and psychologist William James. He defines a religious experience as the feelings, acts and experiences of individual men so far as they apprehend themselves to stand in relation to whatever they may consider the divine. I see. So it is effectively an experience where you are in the presence of the supernatural or the divine. This experience can come as a vision, as voices, or even just a feeling, but ultimately, the experience will bring you closer to God. James went on to explain that there was in fact four characteristics of a religious experience. One was that the experience would be ineffable. It could not simply be explained or be put into words. Number two was that the experience would be noetic meaning that one would receive knowledge from this experience that is otherwise not available through human experience. The third is that the experience would be transient, meaning it will be short-lived, it is a short experience. And finally, the experience would be passive. The person is not in control, but in fact, the experience would be completely controlled by superior power or by God. Right, that makes sense. Following the works of William James, the theologian and philosopher Richard Swinburne developed a further explanation of religious experiences and explained that there were in fact five types of religious experiences. One is a public ordinary experience. This is when one will experience something that exists in public that is completely ordinary. Like someone seeing a sunset or a starry sky or a beautiful landscape. Yet, they feel this is the work of God. They believe they are looking into the creation of a superpower, and this feeling has a religious significance. Right. The second is public extraordinary. This is when one sees something in public that in fact violates the laws of nature. So, witnessing a miracle. If, for example, you're at a beach and witness the parting of the sea, this would be a public extraordinary religious experience. The third is private describable. So a completely private experience you had, no one other than you can feel, see or hear this experience. Yet, you are able to exactly explain this experience in normal language. I see. The fourth is private non-describable. So this would again be a private experience, but you cannot explain this in normal language. You might only be able to give metaphorical explanations. And finally, a non-specific experience. This is like a constant feeling that God is there. You can feel a supernatural or a superior power present and around you all the time. Interesting. And this last point by Swinburne is similar to the descriptions from Rudolf Otto, who described religious experiences as a numinous experience. By numinous, Otto meant that this is a feeling of being in the presence of something greater, feeling a sense of awe as you can feel you are around something so big, so powerful and so much greater than you. Okay, good. I think I have a sufficient understanding of what constitutes a religious experience. Brilliant. Okay, so let me ask you, with so many people reporting to have had religious experiences, do you think this is in fact proof of the existence of God? No, I don't. Why? I am just going to be honest and say that I do not really believe anyone who claims they have had a religious experience. 
When I hear stories of people who have had visions of angels or heard the voice of prophets or felt the presence of God, I just do not believe them. I believe they are either mistaken, exaggerating, confusing a normal experience for a religious experience or just plain lying. Either way, the fact that I do not believe a religious experience has ever or can ever occur means for me it does not prove the existence of God. See, I think you're being unfair to religious experiences. If I say to you this morning I saw a pigeon flying in the sky, you wouldn't even consider that I was lying or mistaken. You would automatically accept what I've said and believe me. Yet as soon as people claim they've had religious experiences, they are met with automatic skepticism and disbelief. Well, yes, and there is a very simple reason why. I have seen a pigeon flying in the sky many times. It is an experience I am accustomed to. If you said to me the pigeon flew down and spoke to you, then I wouldn't believe you because I have never experienced this. Likewise, if you say you saw an angel or Jesus in a vision, I wouldn't believe you because this is nothing I have experienced before. This is a supernatural experience, so I have no reason to believe in supernatural experiences if all I have experienced is the natural. Okay, but nonetheless, just because you have not experienced something does not mean it cannot or has not happened. You would be pretty ignorant to only believe in the things you have experienced. Many people experience many things in the world that you have not. Swinburne raised this argument and called it the principle of credulity. We should in fact believe what people say unless we have proof that what we are being told is false. We should not approach what people say thinking it's false and asking for it to be proven true, but the other way around. We should believe it's true until we can prove it is false. Swinburne also raised the principle of testimony. Swinburne argues that by and large people do tell the truth and so we should believe their experiences unless we know for a fact that what they are saying is false. I'm sorry but I completely disagree with the two principles. I know that people are often mistaken. People often believe what they want to be true rather than what is and people often lie either for attention or for fame or whatever. Swinburne's principles would near enough accept any story unless you can prove it to be false. However, it is virtually impossible to prove a negative. The burden of proof lies on the person making the claim, not on the person denying its validity. Look, if I said to you, whenever I'm alone and there are no cameras or recording equipment, the teddy bears in my room come alive. How could you possibly prove what I am saying is false? It is difficult to prove a negative. So, I start from a basis of incredulity, when what I hear goes against my understanding of the natural world. And as such, I do not believe anyone has genuinely had a mystical or religious experience. And so, I do not believe this supports the existence of God. So you think everyone who has had a religious experience is lying? Not necessarily. Some are. Some may have just been hallucinating due to being intoxicated on drugs and alcohol. Some may just be confusing an ordinary experience with a religious experience. Like, they have asked God for help and then they've heard a thunderstorm and suddenly they felt a strange feeling. This can be confused as a numinous experience, but really, it is just a weather coincidence that has got them overexcited. Hmm. Freud raised a similar argument. He believed that religious experiences were essentially illusions. You have to understand that religious thoughts or beliefs are deeply rooted in our psyche, even in certain atheists. It is a large part of our culture and can play a major role in people's upbringings. So when one has a so-called religious experience, they are essentially projecting their innermost beliefs, desires and even fears. It is a product of human psychology. Freud says it's like a childlike longing for a father with the need for protection against the consequences of human weakness. I would maybe argue it is a desire to be closer to the creator, to understand life and where we come from and help us understand who we are. Maybe if we have a religious experience it will prove we are not just empty matter floating through infinity on a giant ball, but maybe we are a little more special. But this is ultimately wish fulfillment. 
We want it to be true, so we convince ourselves it's true, when really the religious experience was nothing more than an illusion and does not support the existence of God any more than the experience of seeing a pigeon flying in the sky. Good point, but still it makes me wonder. So many reported cases of religious experiences, so many people saying they have had them, even corporate religious experiences, groups of people, all at the same time. I don't know if I can comfortably argue every single person had an illusion. Until it happens to me, I can't believe in them. Well, there you go. Anyway, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what do you all think? Do you believe people have genuinely had a real religious experience? Maybe some of you have had one. Does this prove the existence of God? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care. Until next time.